we doing today, folks? My name is Raven, and welcome to How to Play Duo Lane in Paragon the Overprime. Is this your first time playing a MOBA? Did you recently start playing Paragon the Overprime and are a little confused on how to play? This video will be focused on those players. I want to start with a disclaimer first. Paragon the Overprime is a MOBA, just like League of Legends or Smite. This means the meta is subject to change from one update to the next, heroes get buffed or nerfed, items get added or changed, or even the map could potentially change. This video will hopefully be a good base coverage for the basics of how to play duo lane and your job as the carry. I want to start with terminology. Paragon the Overprime defines this role as duo lane. Have you ever heard anyone say ADC, AD, carry, ranger, hunter, bot lane? They all mean the same thing. The most common name you'll hear for this role is ADC or attack damage carry. This role is defined as being the weakest position on the team at the beginning of the game, but as you progress through the match, you become the strongest in dealing consistent damage with your auto or basic attacks. I personally refer to them as auto attacks. Let's go over some vocabulary quick. Teons, what Overprime calls minions. Farming, this refers to playing safe while you last hit Teons and not engaging with the enemy heroes in order to gain gold and experience. Last hitting, here I am referring to getting the last hit on a Teon in order to receive the full gold from it. Freezing. I'll go over this later in detail, but what this means is manipulating the Teon wave in order to keep it in a safe place to farm. Trading or poke, dealing damage to the enemy heroes in lane with you. Sprint mode, the current way to move around the map quickly, but be warned you will get rooted if you get hit while in this mode. CC or crowd control, commonly referred to abilities that slow, root, stun, or knock you airborne. CS, creep score, or how many Teons you've killed. And last, gank. Having an enemy or friendly hero outside of your lane rotating to your lane and attacking the heroes, most commonly done by the jungler. The current roster of ADCs or your typical heroes that play in the dual lane role are Twin Blast, Murdoch, Sparrow, Drongo, Yin, Revenant, and we'll put Wraith in there, but he is straddling the line of Ranger or Mage. In the game, he's defined as a Ranger, but as of this video, he does not have the same attack speed scaling as the other Rangers, nor has the ability kit to complement him being a Ranger. I won't be covering anything else on him in this video, just as an FYI. When selecting Karmas during the Hero Select screen, it's important to understand that teleportation, or more commonly referred to as flash or blink, is more or less required when playing ADC. This doesn't mean you need to take it, but given how much crowd control and diving abilities there are in this game, it's best to have an instant repositioning tool. Your second karma is up to you, but I always recommend Courage as of the upload date of this video. This gives you an attack speed boost and movement speed boost. This karma is relevant throughout the whole game. Even in late game when your attack speed is high, using Courage as pure movement speed buff is always good. Other viable options are recovery or protection when you want to sustain in lane or play safe. Pain is also a good choice when you want to play aggressive and try to get kills early. In my own opinion, Pain falls off late game when you take it on an ADC because you're more focused on staying alive and positioning rather than trying to get that kill. Revenant is one of the unique rangers on the current hero roster. He has a reload mechanic on his right click ability. Revenant can shoot four auto attacks before he has to reload. I don't recommend playing him if you're a new player because that gives you one more thing to worry about while trying to last hit and poke the enemy. I have made many videos covering Revenant because the devs have changed some aspects of his abilities over the course of the entire year of 2023. Don't take courage as a karma on Revenant because as of right now, the attack speed stat literally does not apply any benefit to him. For Twin Blast, Murdoch, Sparrow, Drongo, and Yin, the stats you want to focus on building are Physical Power, Attack Speed, Physical Pen, Life Steal, and Crit. The game automatically recommends you items to build, but not what I would call the preferred order. 
core items as of patch 1228-23, which I also recommend building in this order, are Merchant's Jewelry Box, Electric Stone, and Witch's Vial. Now here is where Moba knowledge and checking to see what items your opponents are building and what heroes they selected. We are currently in a tank meta, meaning most heroes played in the jungle or solo lane are tanks. They will build defense and health. If the other team has heroes like Severog, Rampage, Adele, or Aurora, then build Merchants first and then build Sitar Chainsaw second. Once you have those two items, you can start punching through their defense and start building crit. As of right now, you can't go wrong with building Merchants first and Electric Stone second though. For Revenant, focus on power, crit, and lifesteal. Core items in order currently are Hunting Instinct, Frendera's Flask, and Treasured Sword of the Kingdom. It's important to have as much value in your auto attacks as possible because you have to reload. Maximizing your crit is a good idea because late game the other carries can land 3 or 4 auto attacks on you while you barely get 2 autos off. Be careful choosing him because he is also a tough choice into a team of tanks or a lot of CC because he has no movement abilities. The laning phase is typically the first 10 minutes of a match. During this time, it's important that you, as the carry, get the last hits on the Teons. This ensures you get the gold from killing the Teons. If you happen to miss a last hit, you'll get the experience, but you won't get any of the gold. Quick PSA to support players, and if you are new, do not attack the Teons while your carry is trying to farm. If you take the Scout Ahead Karma as a support, then you will ensure you get enough gold from just being near the Teons while your carry last hits them. As the Teons take damage, you will notice their health bar turn red. That means they are now in execution range for you to last hit them. Understand that you can still wait for your Teons to damage them a little more before you actually last hit it. This ensures you are getting the most time in lane while you farm. In a perfect world, that's all you would have to worry about. And perfect CS would be 10 every minute, meaning if you get to 10 minutes in the game, well, you will have 100 Teons. But you are playing against another duo support in the lane with you. So while you are last hitting minions, you need to be aware of where the support is, how far are you from them to poke with your autos and abilities, keeping your eye on the map to see where the enemy laners are in case you get ganked, keeping the map warded. I mean, there's a lot here to be aware of, so don't expect to become an expert in the role after a few games. Part of the laning phase, or later on, is freezing the wave. It's a skill that requires some practice for sure. Freezing the wave means you keep the minion waves crashing closer to your safety, which would most likely be closest to your tower. This also forces the enemy duo to push up beyond the midpoint in the lane, putting them in a more opportune position for your team to gank them. And if you have a lead in items and level, and the wave is frozen closer to your tower, that also keeps them further back where they don't get gold or XP from the minions while your support zones them off even more. If you end up falling behind or losing your tower, then it's a good idea to freeze your way behind your jungle so that you can free farm while the other duo will be forced to rotate. Understand that there may be times where it's important for you as the carry to sit in lane and, well, farm for 5 minutes alone while your support goes to mid or somewhere else to help the team. You'll get the full XP from the minions, you are useless if you don't have any damage items and you're behind in levels. Currently there's more value in farming and getting a lot of Teon kills, but getting enemy hero kills still yields sufficient gold and XP, especially if they have a bounty. A general rule of thumb is leaving the ranged minions alive, which do more damage. It's a good way to start a freeze. And if you freeze by your tower, you can recall to base and be back in time for the wave to still be close. Opposite of freezing, there will be times where you secure a kill on one or both heroes in the lane while the minion wave is outside of their tower. It's a good idea now for your support to help you shove the wave into the enemy tower and kill the enemy minions as fast as you can. This will force your minions into their tower, where they will start taking damage and die while the enemy heroes are gone, denying them from XP and gold, and resetting your minion wave to meet the next wave outside of their tower. This gives you time to recall to base and buy items. While you are farming or trying to poke, I find it useful to constantly be going back into sprint mode. If you watch when I play, every time I last hit a minion, I start the animation of going into sprint mode. This can be useful because it will allow you to be able to rotate quickly if need be for an objective or helping your jungler on your side of the map. It's also important to keep an eye on the portals. The purple one is in your lane so someone can go from Prime Guardian Pitch straight into your lane for a gank. 
Yellow Portal, you have some time because it is inside the Prime Spirit Pit, which you can easily see and retreat from. And anytime someone goes through a portal, you'll hear an audio cue and their little portrait will appear on the map. There's a purple minion to the side of the lane, which I simply refer to as purple buff. This minion gives you a little bit of gold and mana regen for a short amount of time. This buff gives no experience. I will usually just take it for myself, but if my support is using a lot of their mana to poke or keep me alive, then I give it to them. Although it might be hard to control in a solo queue setting, whether you are playing quick play or ranked, it's a good idea to keep these next tips in mind. Once you see the 60 second timer for Prime Spirit pop up on the right side of your screen, you want to make sure you get the timing right to arrive in the pit before it spawns. Make sure you have ample time to push your wave into the enemy's tower and recall the base so you can buy and be ready when that thing spawns. Try not to use your karmas for no reason. When you use a karma, you want to make sure you get the most value out of it. That could be securing a kill or saving yourself when the team fight does happen at Prime Spirit. If you happen to get an early lead, it's also wise to back and buy to rotate to the Prime Guardian's underling, you know, sub 18 minutes, in order to help your team secure that. If you happen to be stuck in the lane, then don't worry about it, let your team handle that, and you just keep on farming. From mid to late game, you need to be thinking, is it good for me to go farm solo, or should I be rotating to team fights and objectives? If you're ahead, then you should absolutely use that advantage to turn fights in your favor. Always keep in mind your positioning. You should stay close to your support, considering they should be the first one on your team to help you if an enemy jumps or dives you. Stay behind your tanks or junglers and let the enemy use all their big AoE spells on them, while you sit back at a distance and just auto attack them. This might seem obvious to some, but keep in mind that abilities do have cooldowns. So once you see a mage use two of their damaging abilities, or you see a bunch of stunning abilities go off, then it's usually safe to move further ahead and engage, knowing they can't repeat those abilities right away. As the carry, you should always be looking to increase your gold gain. Take any minion or jungle camp that you can find. Later in the game, your jungler will stop clearing most jungle camps because of the objectives or ganking. If it's alive, go and take the camp for XP and gold. Any advantage is a good advantage. I personally would avoid taking the red or blue buffs because those give a lot of XP to your jungler. I typically start to take those past 20 minutes uh, sooner if my jungler tells me I can. Beyond that, there isn't much else I can cover besides stressing that it is vital you can land your auto attacks consistently. That is where all your damage comes from anyway. And mind your position because you're most often the first target the enemy team will be looking to engage on and take you out of the fight. I hope you all enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two. It's nice to see new players playing the game a year into early access with a full release right around the corner. New players, please try to get as much practice in as you can in quick play. There are a lot of things to learn in this game, and that game mode is the best to do it in. You won't find many players that are open to teaching new ones how to play in the middle of a ranked game, unfortunately. Be sure to check out my streams on Twitch at RavenGG, on Kick at Raven, subscribe here on YouTube, and follow my Twitter at RavenGG. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.